Welcome back, everyone, to Vox Markets. My name is Paul Hill, and I'm delighted again to be able to speak to CEO Soup Chamdal and CFO Michael Botha of Cake Box, the UK's go to provider of luxury fresh cream cakes. So, uh, welcome, uh, gents. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning, Paul. Yeah, well, um, big congrats on today's um, uh, inline um, FY23 results and positive outlook. But before we sort of dig into the details, uh, Souk, I don't suppose you could quickly remind investors of the successful transition the company's made since its IPO and uh, where it currently stands. Oh, of course, Paul. And uh, it's our fifth year anniversary, actually, today. And uh, we've achieved uh, nearly 135% growth in franchise sales nearly 82% growth in franchise stores and just over 125% growth in annual dividend. Wow, well, big congrats there. I hope you're celebrating with a big cake there. One of your uh, one of your luxury platters, which I've, my family have tried twice and absolutely loved it, giving you 20 out of 10. That's our honest feedback. Now, um, when we last spoke, Souk, you, um, you mentioned sort of three months ago that you'd seen a normalisation in sort of like consumer buying patterns after the cost of living crisis. How, how's, the, how's the current trading faring at the coalface in, um, in the shops? And... If that continues to be the case with the blip we had last year, with the unprecedented or crisis or triple fold with the energy crisis, inflation, cost of living, or people now after September have started going back to form, and which is that we've got all the problems, we've normalised our budgets now, we know what our costs are, and we will always have that little treat on the birthday, spend that extra quid extra and make it more fun or make that celebration more special. And that's what we've been seeing since the or the second quarter. And we continue to go along that path. Mm. With the um, with the like for like sales, they've sort of really had an excellent you know trajectory. The first half, obviously, of last year, they were negative against tough you know comps and obviously those those headwinds you talked about. But then you went back into it just over 3% like for like in the second half. And they're now tracking at, what, 5.4% year to date in the new year. How do you see that going forward? And, you know, what's driving that sort of like, you know, that, that is it price, volume? What's sort of chiming with, with consumers? Again, all consumers now have settled down or the, the shocks have, have subsided. And so what do you do? So you do plan. You will have less takeaways. You're going to do your dry cleaning but you're going to, again, make sure that you have that little birthday treat. And that's where we step in. We are a celebration. We are a treat. And so when you have a treat, all health conscious goes out the window, price goes out the window. And because you're not doing it every day, you're doing it on an average family. You've got four, four members. That's only once a quarter that you're celebrating. And I, I think that's reflected in our results that people have gone back to now celebrating all those little celebrations that are coming through the year. Mm. Good, good. And then one question I keep getting from investors is if we, you know, obviously, <laughs> we've had the Bank of England, Andrew Bailey, like in interest rates by half a percentage point, which hasn't helped sort of like, you know, borrowers and, and mortgage holders and people like that. And the sort of question I get quite commonly from investors is if we do go through a sort of like a, a downturn, how resilient is the sort of the business and how resilient has it been in, in previous sort of slowdowns? <laughs> All right, what I'm going to say is that this, with the hiking interest rates, of the mortgage is going up. And so we've got another financial crisis. And this to us is, if you can call it a normal crisis. <laughs> normal? A normal crisis. So in 2008, 2012, the recession and everything, and we thrived in times of crisis. Last year's crisis was a, it was a blip. We'd never see anything like it. But in a normal crisis, uh, when there's a squeeze on the on, on money uh, in the in the household, we thrive because they are going to have that treat, and we, and our our business model is resilient, or our products are affordable, and our franchise is a capital light model, and every crisis we see an uptick in applications for franchises, new franchises because they want to just tip that scale of life and work balance and uh, I'm, I'm going to say that this is going to be a more of a normal crisis than what we had last year and I'm being very resilient when it comes to um, crisis as been seen through or COVID 
as being seen to 2008 and 2012. Good. And then, um, and then, Michael, just turning to sort of like the, you know the financial sort of highlights from um, from last year. Can you just talk through sort of like you know what, what you saw between the sort of the online, the store sales, and the and the and the margins and the cash flow? Because it was a it was a, it was a pretty good you know given the condition, given the tough macroeconomic, it was a pretty good set of results. It, it was, and there's a lot of positives in there, Paul. So, and you know, if we start with sales, you know, nine point six percent up in terms of our franchise sales. Um, you know, driven by our 20 store openings, um, our, the positive light for likes that we ended the, the year with. Um, and then our own group sales were up 5.6%. Um, but underlying, if you look at that, our product sales were up 9.5. So that tracked in line, and that's something that we look at, that tracks in line with the actual franchise sales. Mm. Um, our, our store sales or, or the, the new build sales were down, but that's because we opened up 20 versus 31 in the previous year. Um, our margin increased uh, from 48% to 49.4. And what drove uh, that, Michael? What, what how, was that pricing, or is that just the, the sort of recessionary input costs just alleviated slightly? A bit of both, as well as efficiencies that, that we are driving through the investment in our distribution centers. Um, over the last couple of years through COVID, we, we have supported franchisees in terms of, of pricing. When we've had price increases, we try to to hold those back uh, until we we thought we could we were in a position to actually um, push those through. So the beginning of last year, when the sales were down, you know we we were getting increases in fresh cream, which we we helped um, the franchisees with. And then towards the back end of the year, when sales were were better, we were able to to, to flow some of those increases through. So a bit of pricing. Um, there's a bit of um, our distribution centers efficiencies. Um, and also some of the cost inputs are starting to to stabilize. Good. And what about the sort of the cash flow? Because I mean, I just I did the numbers, and you seem to have generated, if I correct this wrong, about six million of free cash flow. And if I do the numbers again, on, on your market cap's fifty one million, which to me is 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 over eleven percent free cash flow yield, which sounds like a money machine to me. <laughs> well, I think it it just again um, points to how cash generative. Um, our, our businesses and capital light. You know, mm. Over the last two years, we have invested in in a lot of capex in our distribution centres, and that's going to give us underpin our growth uh, for the, for the next for the coming years. Yeah. Um, so going forward, we don't expect the, the level of capital expenditure to be what it has been in the last couple of years. So again, it, it just shows that our, from our trading, how our cash generate generative nature of the business. Good. Uh, and then just below the line, below gross margin, in terms of the overheads, you obviously had a, sort of a, a large pickup. And you, can you just go through sort of a bit of a colour on that and how much is sort of like underlying? Yeah, so in, in terms of that, we split it up between, I guess, people people cost and, and then general overheads. Um, from a people point of view, we've had new hires brought in new skill, skill levels within the business. Um, there's been a normal inflationary increases. Um, we had an interim CFO um, that has put some cost into the business, but, but that is not going to be going forward. Um, and then other overheads, um, there's some inflationary increases um, uh, coming out of COVID as well, travel and subsistence. So there's some sort of normalization as well in terms of, of just business as usual. Good. Now, Sue, just in terms of the sort of the, you know, continuing growth strategy, I saw you added another sort of like, you know, 20 shops during the period, et cetera. Can you just take us through sort of how you see the expansion continuing in sort of like the, the, the next 12 months with regards to stores, online, kiosks, and obviously your relationship with Asda? Okay, no, we've always had an ambition of increasing our store estate by 20 to 24 stores. And we delivered on that last year and we aim to deliver again on this year as well. And our, our Asda relationship continues. Uh, as we find uh, suitable sites, we will continue to open the kiosks. And, uh, you know, we've got a healthy pipeline, 47, a million 47 uh, applications already in, in the pipeline. And uh, our online sales goes on from strength to strength. And mm. we're between 25 and 20%, 27% now of online sales, which is uh, quite an achievement comparing to after COVID, when a lot of the online sales dropped off for many, many retailers. 
Okay, good. And then I just want to ask you a, a, a cheeky question here, Sue. I know I keep asking international expansion plans because you know you've got such a fantastic blueprint which works really well in the UK. And when are you going to allow continental or Asian or American consumers to taste the uh, the, the, the product? Again, it's always in the back of our mind, and there's always all background planning, or but or we haven't finished uh, expanding here in the UK. And as we go ahead and uh, fill in all those white spaces that we have, including Scotland, which we have, we've still only got one store, but we've got big plans there. I've got Northern Ireland or, on our doorstep. And once those have been fulfilled, we will always look uh, further afield. Good. I suppose you'd have to corner the market in Cornish fresh cream, uh, uh, sort of like, you know, mixes, don't you? Sort of like just to then take it abroad. <laughs> Anyway, we'll wait and see. Um, now, just turning to the um, the sort of the, the, the cash, um, Michael, um, in with regards to the dividend and what your sort of your future investment plans are. Well, I, I think so. We, have you know, our capital um, allocation uh, roadmap um, that we're going to put in place is we're going to ensure that we we keep our progressive dividend policy um, and make sure we we increase the returns to shareholders. Um, and then we'll be looking at, at our best to to invest the rest of the, the our cash. Um, you, know, you made in some investments though last year, didn't you? you in your distribution centres, your new factory line, and and also some refrigerated trucks. Or yes, yeah, so, so over the last last two years, really, we, we spent the best part of three million pounds in terms of investing in our distribution centres, and 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 that is now that put us in a position that we can grow from there. Um, we don't expect to have that level of investment going forward. So the cash generation should only increase. Hmm. Um, and what are you what so, so what are you planning to do then? You've obviously got six million, you know, and you you're, you increase the dividend, six million as in like, you know, at the end of March, and, th and that will continue to increase. Uh, are you just going to continue to build it up and give you that resilience about optionality of what you want to do or um, you know, how you how do you see that? I mean in, in the we're probably going to look short term and long term, Paul. In terms of, first of all, um, with the increase in in the interest rates, um, do we look at at how we can in, invest and, and either get a better return on on that cash, or or look to pay down part of our mortgages that we have? Um, yeah. Um, but still, you know, that's only 1.2 million that, that we have left on our, on our mortgages. So we have still got a healthy cash balance. So we need to look at um, how we can better invest that. In the future good okay well then just finally then in terms of sort of like you know the the trading outlook for the for the year i'm guessing we're in line with expectations given the positive like for like of 5.4 percent and uh sort of the current news flow do you want to give, give us a bit of color of of, of what you, you know how, how do you see the sort of like updates for investors well we've we've had a really good start to the year but as as any cfo should be um i'm, I'm erring on the side of caution it's still early, early days. Um, you know, it's uh, we're going to come up against stronger comps in the in the, in the back end of the year. Mm. Um, but you know, so far everything is is your trading is good for us. Um, uh, and we've got our new website which is launched. Um, we're in the, the the first sort of phase of that launch, just to ensure that it's stable. Um, and then we've got some really good plans in terms of how we're going to engage with customers um, with that new website. Um, so I think it's a bit of watch the space, um, but you know, it's 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 going according to plan. Good. Well, I hope you managed to find a bit of spare time to treat yourself to that five-year anniversary cake uh, after the result. These very good ones and the cash uh, the cash pile. I would point investors to have a look at the updated uh, Librum note, which I haven't actually seen yet. But on the previous one, given it's in line with expectations, it's there at a target price of two pounds fifty, which is a r roughly round about double compared to what it is now. And given your over eleven percent you know, free cash flow yield, then um, that seems um, very good value. In fact, as <laughs> another affordable treat, a bit like one of the, the, the cakes in your shop. So uh, thanks very much, uh, Michael. I know we've just lost um, Souk, but um, big thanks to him as well. And uh, look forward to catching up uh, in June course. Much.